Welcome to July 7 News, take a top stories in crypto and bring out a bite-sized piece. And today, just as the thumbnail suggests, there's a lot of shilling from people up top about what is happening in the Bitcoin and crypto market. And we're going to take a look at the top-down approach of what I think is going on. We're going to take a look at uh, Square's big revenue maker, surprise, Bitcoin. Also take a look at uh, three prominent mayors in the uh, United States and what they're doing as far as cryptocurrency. We're also going to take a look at a senior member of the Senate and what he is talking about as far as crypto and where things are going. Also we'll take a look at uh, banks and uh, how they're actually getting on board. And finally, we'll take a look at uh, another side of the coin and take a look at uh, the gaming uh, industry as far as crypto and digital assets. And we're gonna talk about who's gonna come on the show next week. So we'll get to all those things, but first take a look at what's going on in the market. So today's a pretty great day. Beautiful here, Friday, weekend's here, everybody's happy, right? Not only is uh, everybody happy for the weekend, we're also happy because the market still maintains a nice slight buoyancy. And uh, we've got uh, 2.7 trillion. The sentiment is pretty much neutral because we don't really know if it's gonna go a little bit down or a little bit up, but we know where things are gonna go in the long run. And that's, uh, that's up. Now, if you're new to the crypto space, just be aware that this is super volatile. So if you see a 10 or 20% swing, don't go crazy. We just call it a Tuesday. Nobody really cares. That's just pretty much how, that's just par for the course. And then we take a look at uh, some of the big gainers for the day. Um, Bitcoin's only around 61,000. It's not really too much going on there. 24 hour change. Binance coin is up bigly. Good for them. Everything, is, everything else is a little bit down in the uh, last 24 hours, except for Shiba Inu making another pump. Good for you if you held on to Shiba Inu. I don't have any, but uh, hey, some people get rich off that. Some people make like millions of dollars off that thing. But again, uh, for the long run, I'm just a long-term investor. That's not my style. And let's see what else. 31% for crypto.com, fantastic, ICP, and so on and so forth. So market's strong, market's good, everybody's happy. Why don't we just break into today's, or one of today's top stories, and that is Square's big revenue maker. And it really wasn't about so much about how Square is doing uh, per se. Square is going to do just fine, uh, whether it's crypto or digital assets or whatnot. But if we take a look at the past, you can really see just how massive uh, this is. And I'll explain that in a second. So uh, Square's cash app generated 1.8 billion in Bitcoin revenue in Q3. So good for them. Uh, but there's a caveat. So payments from from Square said in its third quarter earnings letter Thursday uh, that its, uh, its app, the cash app, generated $1.82 billion of Bitcoin revenue in the quarter and 42 million of gross profits. That's up 115% and 29% year over year. And just so you know, they did say that this was a little bit of a slight decrease. And they said this is because of the relative stability in the price of Bitcoin, which affects trading activity compared to prior quarters. Because, you know, you have to understand uh, the exchanges and even cash app and things like that, they're going to make a lot of money if you trade a lot. If you get in there and you move things around, you trade, you can make, I mean, some pretty great gains if you're a big trader, but I don't do that because I don't have, I don't really like to sit and watch candles and charts all day. I got other things to do. So uh, uh, if you want to make a ton of money that way, that's not this channel. But uh, for this, they're saying, hey, you know what? We're down a little bit because there's a little bit of a, of a decrease in people actually buying. And that's why you're going to see the different exchanges list the Shiba Inus, list the Doge coins, list the whatever new meme coin is out there because you know they know people are going, to, are going to trade it like crazy and they're going to make a lot of money. But that's not the big story. The big story here is I want you to remember a couple of numbers. Cash App generated 1.82 billion of Bitcoin and 42 million of gross profit. That was in Q3, right? So if we take a little time warp, and go back in time just a little bit on february 26 2020 i'd cover this story at that point and this is how big things are growing bitcoin drove half of square's cash app revenue in fourth quarter nobody that's great whatever everybody's excited about that but look, look at these numbers square reported bitcoin revenues of 178 million between november 1 and december 31st q4 178 million in Q4, that's the revenue. You know what the revenue was here? 1.82 billion of Bitcoin revenue. So let's compare that real quick again. Bitcoin revenue of 178 million and Bitcoin revenue of 1.82 billion. I'm no math genius. That's a pretty good, uh, pretty good spread. Also, uh, the profits were 3 million. Again, 3 million. Profits here, 42 million. So 
now do you kind of get why these industries are jumping in they really want to be a part of bitcoin because there's a bunch of money to be made and that's really what it comes down to so all these exchanges and all the different banks that are they're looking around going wait wait you're telling me that i can make that much just by adding one of these cryptocurrencies and that's just bitcoin so as we move forward we'll see how it all plays out but now you kind of understand a little bit more of like just how much money is really being out there. And that's a ton. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And then uh, let's take a look at uh, the politicians because they want to be a part of this train too. So real quick, there was three mayors that came out. The New York mayor-elect Adam says he will take his first three paychecks in Bitcoin. Good for him. And uh, just a real uh, quick snippet here. New York mayor-elect Eric Adams said Thursday he would take his first three paychecks in Bitcoin and signals his attention to make the city the center of the crypto industry after he takes off in January. Hopefully he can get that bit license craziness uh, to go down a little bit as far as the requirements because every, I mean we have some super great industries trying to get that bit license from New York and they can't do it because they keep in turn out because there's so much data and documents they need. It's ridiculous. So hopefully he can say you know what let's just make this the epicenter. Let's just move forward because there's too much uh, regulation right here. Let's break that up a little bit and so we can get things going. Uh, that is the mayor right there, mayor-elect. He doesn't take office until uh, December, January. Correct me in the uh, comments, but he's he's just the, he's just the mayor-elect of New York right now. But it's I like where he's going. Looks pretty good. Also on top of that, we know this guy, Suarez, my, uh, Miami mayor, to take his entire salary in Bitcoin. He's like, oh yeah, you're going to take three paychecks? Hold my beer because I'm going to take the entire salary in Bitcoin. So Suarez is... Uh, is on top of things and not to be outdone another florida <laughs> another uh florida mayor says uh i'm gonna take to do the same thing jane castor the mayor of uh, tampa bay florida announced she will begin accepting her paycheck in bitcoin and then not to be outdone although this is a little bit uh, earlier yet Rand paul one of the senior members of uh of uh, u.s senate uh says look i think crypto should be the world reserve currency yeah he said that check this out Here's what I've started to believe now is that the government currencies are so unreliable. They're also fiat currencies. They're not backed by anything. The dollar has been more stable than most other countries. And so it is the reserve currency. I've by the way, this is the spiel that made you a rock star with young people in your presidential campaign. Well, I've started to question now whether or not cryptocurrency could actually become the reserve currency of the world as more and more people lose confidence in government. <laughs> Losing confidence in government. Who would do that? So there you have it. Uh, everybody is pretty much shilling from the top down with good reason. And I think price action to follow. And that just leads me to my last point, banks. And uh, if you've been following the show for quite some time or any length of time, you know that I believe that if banks don't change their tune on crypto, they'll get what's called, I call, what I call blockbustered, meaning they're going to be left into the dust. And uh, this just goes without saying that uh, this was an older article, but just as a point of reference, uh, six billion dollars. Uh, dollar NCR opens Bitcoin purchases to 650 banks and credit unions. This was in June 30th, and it states 650 U.S. banks will soon be able to offer Bitcoin purchases to an estimated 24 million total customers, just like what we saw with the Cash App. Why wouldn't they do it? It's a great source of revenue, and people want it. It's your job as a business to not decide what people want, but to ask what they want and give that to those people. And this is what the people want. On top of that, just an old story that's uh, BNY Mellon, which is one of the oldest banks in the United States to offer Bitcoin services. And they're really leading the charge uh, moving forward. So again, it doesn't take rocket science to understand, but uh, this is why these uh, institutions and entities are here. So when you're talking to your family, friends, and loved ones, just remind them like, look, I think you think it's a little bit, uh, a little bit out there and, and you think I may be out there, but it's not just me. Uh, we've got mayors, we've got politicians, we've got huge corporations, we've got big banks, and they're all doing the same thing. So you can either get with me or you can just let the train pass you by. Again, this is just investment opinion on investment advice, but that's just what I do and what I tell my family. And then lastly, I will just make mention of two things. Plan B, as far as like price action goes, he's been right with his uh, with his TA so far. Remember, the, his price prediction he's talking about here is TA, not on his stock to flow. And he said August... Close of 47K, it did. September 43K. October, I think he said 64K, but it was, uh, and then he said, well, I was close, 61K. And he said, look, my next targets are this, November 98K or 98,000, then December 135K. I've always said, I've always thought Bitcoin's gonna be between, B 
be between 100 and 150, 130K sounds about reasonable to me, so why not? And then we have uh, this little gem right here. Uh, this is from Glassnode. They talk about market cap rising faster than value settlement, settlement meaning that they believe uh, that Bitcoin is actually undervalued at this point. So if you put it all together and what do you think is going to happen as time goes on? Well, it's going to be a lot of price action and potentially we're going to see some fireworks, which I believe are going to happen November, December. Let me know what you think in the comments section. This will be interesting. And then lastly, we'll finish up with a little bit of a gaming news and who I got on the show next week. So just real quick, gaming booms amid the, uh, the metaverse hype. And on the show, I've been covering the traditional blue chip cryptos and digital assets. Um, but uh, in real life, I also do a lot of investments into uh, real estate. I have an education online platform. And also I do, um, uh, uh, we have a sports facility and also um, an Amazon business. But so to put them all together, I really like the whole terms of assets. And I like hard assets. I like uh, assets. I even like metals, gold, silver. Sure, I own some of that. And then as far as uh, like real estate, uh, investment real estate, uh, short-term rentals, Airbnb, uh, Verbo, things like that. And I, I'm really excited about the metaverse because I think that that is the new uh, place to get into as far as for virtual land. And I'll be showing you exactly uh, the different lands that I've purchased and why I've purchased those significant, those areas and in what respect. But I just want to show you if you think like well is this really a thing check this out so this was a nice little article about from crypto briefing they said uh, october saw blockchain games make up the majority of activity in the dap industry 55 percent of unique active wallets totaling 1.19 million users interacted with gaming dApps over the past month and we take a look at this unique active wallets you see here in the uh, dark blue that's DeFi, and DeFi was crushing it. it's been it's still doing well right but in june 2021 it was it was the majority then he had games in this like purplish and then gray was NFTs. NFTs haven't really done a huge amount. I mean, but I mean, we hear about them all the time. But if we take if we take a peek behind the curtain, we also see that, hey, games or gaming or play to earn is becoming a pretty big industry. I mean, besides, outside of Axie Infinity and what's going on, I think those two things, I think play to earn is going to be huge. And I think the metaverse will obviously be huge, but it's the land. It's the land that you buy. It's the land that you own. And the different things that you can do on that land because it really is the next big asset. So that is essentially what is going on there. And then lastly, I want to say that next week, uh, we'll have a couple of uh, people in the show. We've got some uh, pretty big ones or pretty good ones coming in. We've got on uh, Monday, we've got Simon Yu from Storm X. And then we've also got Ken. Uh, he's the CEO of uh, Meld which is a, a nice little DeFi project where it's very interesting about how they, they positioned it. It was their first uh, ISPO and uh, also uh, the way that they lend things out. Also on Wednesday, I'm going to be doing a, a series with uh, Ki Young Ju from, he's the CEO of CryptoQuant. It's all about on-chain analysis. And we're going to do a little education series about how to read those things, how to get into it, how to delve into it so you are prepared when things start to move. And then uh, also on Thursday, we got my man Crypto Stash coming on. If you know what Crypto Stash, he's one of the guys in the description that I recommend to, to follow. He's been in the metaverse since like the beginning. Like, I mean, he was the first one that I, I watched about NFTs, gaming, and the metaverse. So I'm curious to see what he has to talk about, what may be the next big thing, and where we could actually go to. And that is it. So look, uh, if you uh, enjoyed today's video, Go ahead and give it a thumbs up, but give it a like, that helps a lot. Also subscribe, a lot of things are gonna come fast and furious, so it's good to actually get all the best information or just good information that you possibly can. And that is it for today. So thanks so much for sticking with me, I appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next one.